we have a definition of uh, uh, income classes. I'm an economist, so I'm going to use an economic perspective here to social issues. So we have the so-called middle, new middle classes, this group. This group is not uh, what we would say, it's not a US middle class. It's not an European middle class. It doesn't have two cars on their garage. They're not thinking about that. But they are pretty much a Brazilian middle class and they are also world middle class. In the sense that the Brazilian income distribution is not very different from the world income distribution. I mean, they are quite similar. Surprisingly similar. So, so when you look at Brazil, you know, you came here to visit from Turkey, a good reason to be here, Brazil is a good picture of the world. For example, the inequality and the level of income of Brazil is very similar to the world level. So this is the map of the upper class in Brazil. They are located here, but as I, I, I've shown, this is where it has grown most, the, the income. So uh, this is the map of Brazil, 93 to 95. The, the, the darker the colors, the higher the level of higher income groups. So this was due to the stabilization process in 94. From 95 to 2003, the map doesn't change that much because it was a time of external crisis that hit us very badly. Uh, you know, Asian crisis, Russian crisis, Brazilian crisis, Argentinian crisis, and but from 2003 to 2009, there was, a, you know, the map changes a lot, an upgrade, and that's what we forecast to 2014. So Brazil is very different from what used to be in 2093, and we expect it to be just like five years or three years now, much much different from what it is now, why inequality is falling. And now, and I think it's, uh, I think Brazil is doing better in relative terms in the last three years than it did before, you know, in the golden age of world growth until 2008. Brazil was not doing that good. The, what, is, what was our ingredient was inequality fall, that's what made this upgrade in the new middle class. But more recently, Brazil is closing the gap in terms of growth with respect even to the BRIC countries. And uh, while, of course, developed countries are stagnated, so I think the Brazilian comparison in the last three years is the best you can get with the rest of the world. You know, we are very used here in this country to have many crises. So we kind of develop institutions, we develop an attitude that works well during crisis. And I think that's... Uh, so this is uh, what happened, to, to give you an absolute numbers, in, in eight years, 40 million people joined the so-called middle class. This is the size of Spain. If we add the upper class, this would be 49 million, so this is about the size of uh, now it's Spain, 49 is Spain, Argentina is 40 million. So we're talking about a huge transformation. And we expect, we forecast in the next three years, 13 million more into C class and 7 million more into A, B class. So it's a process because now it's a growth over growth. We get the com compound growth rates effects. So this is the type of transformation we get in the economic pyramid between 93 and 2014. So it's, uh, it's a big, and inequality is pretty much behind that inequality change. So this new middle class in Brazil is very important in economic terms. All big firms are looking after these emerging groups here. All big companies come and they want to know where are these guys because they, they are the ones who are buying the products, they are the new consumers. In a time of world stagnation, they are very precious. And for a foreign perspective, you know, since these, the purchasing power of poorer Brazil is not only growing real domestic currency, but it's growing even much faster in dollar terms, which interests 
foreign firms. So it's, you have a exchange rate valuation effect on top of that, so it's really very attractive. Politics, this new middle class holds more than half of the Brazilian population, so it's more than deciding the second round of an election with the median voter, but it could decide itself by itself the whole election. So, uh, and you know, Brazil it's already a democracy for 23 years or so. I mean, we had elections in 90, 22 years, 23 years. And something that's very clear in Brazil, whenever you have an election, poverty falls sharply. If you get all election years, the median income growth is the green one. Election years are very good for the population. The post-election years are pretty tough. And all over Brazilian democratic history. So we have these political cycles. Last year, 2010, I mean, we had 80% GDP growth. Poverty fell by 16%. So it's really, um, so let me jump on that. So uh, the question, so, uh, so to end my presentation, let me you know, go into a few psychological aspects of the Brazilian population. Let's look a little bit on happiness figures. So this is, uh, comes from a work of Angus Deaton about present life satisfaction and per capita GDP and purchasing power parity. So there is a positive relationship. It's more pronounced here than for rich countries. But what is the key feature of Brazil, in my opinion? There are two key features. The first one is Brazil is very optimistic with respect to the future. So if you ask people, give a grade for your life satisfaction five years down the road, people give very high grades. We are in the same club as US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, some European or uh, oil producing countries and actually Brazil turns out to be the world champion in future happiness for four years in a row. We have been this for four years, this, all four years. So this is the characteristic of Brazilians. Whenever you ask a Brazilian opinion, is very positive about his life. You say, well, five years down the road, you know, if you, if you, if you buy, if you, if you buy a Brazilian for what he's worth, and if you sell him for what he thinks he's worth in five years' time, you're going to get rich. So, um, so this is the Brazil's 8.6 from zero to 10 on average. So this helped me to understand a bit of the Brazilian psychological attitude. Brazilians are very optimistic with respect to their own life. So this is a this is a empirical regularity, optimism about individual life. When you ask Brazilians, give a grade. So these are the Brazilians in 2014. Okay. We 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 say here we have two sayings here. First, God is Brazilian. The second, I would say, God is ten. So this is combines the two. But what? Uh, the problem in Brazil is that Brazilians give a very high grade to their lives in five years, or our lives in five years, but we give a very bad grade to the country as a whole. So there is a, some sort of a contradiction. How can everyone think his own life would be very good, but the life, average life of the country? Not everyone can be above the average. That's an impossibility. And, and this, I, I think, captures a little bit of the you know, uh, we in Brazil, you know, if we put in terms of the La Fontaine fable of the ant and the, and the crickets, I don't know if you know the, the, this fable, Brazil, Brazilians are very much like crickets, you know, we are individualistic, we are optimistic with respect to the future, but our major problems are collective problems. And that's what I think, why Brazil is giving these big jumps. You know, we became democracy, which is a collective problem. We stabilized the economy in the 90s. We reduced inequality, we reduced informality in the 2000s. And uh, we still have 
a lot of inequality, a lot of informality. So Brazil is a country full of problems, collective problems. But we are being able to, you know, like we had a 40% inflation per month, every single month until 94. Then all of the sudden, inflation was stabilized, went close to zero. And we were very, you know, we felt like we went to heaven. We didn't go to heaven with stabilization. We were in hell before, and we just became a normal country. But this ha happens in many different situations. Education in Brazil is very bad, but it's improving. Uh, informality. So Brazil is a country full of problems and full of opportunities if address its own problems. And I think that's what we have been doing in the last 30 years, still a lot of problems to, 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 to be solved. So we just uh, released this research. Uh, we are translating and bringing him uh, here uh, a little, so it's uh, still a... Uh, so uh, I invite you to have a look on that. It has the link. I, I'll, I'll give you a few of the brochures. And uh, so to end up, you know, to wrap, wrap it up, uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, uh, you, you tend to put these so-called emerging countries, and as I say, Turkey should be in there. And I think we really need Turkey there. Why? Because I think these BRIC countries are a very good representation of big groups of the world population. You have no, um, you know, a Chinese, Indian, you have South African, African, you have Brazil, you know, a new world. So we need some, someone from the Middle East so close there. And I think we, we would really have in like five or six countries a good picture of the major groups of the world that are growing. But, uh, but if we compare Brazil with other BRIC countries, how Brazil do, uh, what I think is that BRIC countries is a very interesting concept, not because of the similarities, but because of the differences, especially when you compare Brazil. All BRIC countries, including South Africa, which had already a very high inequality, inequality is, for, is rising in all BRIC countries by a lot, like did here in the 60s, while it's falling a lot here during the last 12 years. So this is very different. So the new middle class in Brazil are people who were in the bottom and are growing, while in China, India, are people who were already relatively well off. So it's very, it's a different picture. So I think if you, I'm an economist, if you ask most economists, give a grade to Brazil, the grade won't be very good because you know, we're not growing that much. Not com nothing compared to China, to India, and perhaps to Turkey. But uh, if you ask the population, population is really very happy, as the you know the, the subjective questions show. But you know because inequality is falling, uh, so I think you know uh, in uh, Brazil uh, we're not living in an economic miracle, but we are living in sort of a combined economic and social progress. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a very different uh, situation. And I think I won't have the time to, to talk about that, but something that I think Brazil has very good exports products in terms of social policies like Bolsa Familia, some policies on microcredit, um, um, uh, education targets, I think it's a very interesting policies. So I think you can learn a lot in Brazil on some success cases and a lot, but really a lot of what you should not do. Because Brazil, we made a lot of mistakes in social policies. So I think we, we can really teach you many uh, from our past mistakes in, 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 in many fields. And you know, uh, so this is uh, our website. These are some samples of our research in different areas. So, and just to make a final advertisement, we are launching today a book. You are all invited. It will be here in Rio, this book, uh, at 7 o'clock tonight. Okay? You are all invited. Thank you.